Hello my dear friends, I hope you all are doing good. This is Prashant Mahoney and I welcome all of you to Study IQ. Dear friends, the topic that we are going to discuss today is India-Sri Lanka fisherman issue. The question is why? Why we are going to discuss this particular issue? Now, if you are preparing for civil services exams, then uh, if you go to your syllabus, General Studies 2, then you will find it is clearly given there India and its neighborhood relations right so that's first point is pertaining to your uh, syllabus the second thing is if you go to your mains examination past papers then you will find that at least one question right you will find at least one question on this topic and the third thing is that we will discuss some things that will help you with your pre-examinations as well so these are the three reasons why this particular topic is important so let's move ahead but before moving ahead do you know that uh, up to 35 percent off is available on different pen drive and tablet courses that is offered by study iq but the thing is this up to 35 percent off is available only till 21st of october so if you haven't got it yet then i would recommend all of you to get it as soon as possible if you have any further question or queries regarding it what you have to do is check out studyiq.com uh, over there you have uh, you will get chat support as well and again if you have uh, if you want to speak with someone then you can give us a call on this number now coming back to india and sri lanka dear friends uh, recently india and sri lanka uh, decided they both have vowed to find a sort of permanent solution now why this particular word is highlighted here permanent because if you go back to uh, the history of uh, of India and Sri Lanka relationship then you find that uh, this thing has been going on for the longest period of time and uh, the other thing is that if you go if you if you analyze the overall relationship between India and Sri Lanka then this relationship is a very dynamic relationship because uh, you have uh, on one side on one end you have uh, Buddhism right buddhism works like a sort of bridge in 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 developing a rapport between the people of sri lanka and india uh, on the other side we have a common interest like protecting indian ocean right uh, ensuring the security of indian ocean and of course we are neighbors no doubt about it uh, there are other things as well but this particular fisherman's issue right has been a sort of bone of contention when it comes to India and Sri Lanka and this is something that India does not want India does not want any sort of uh, issue in uh, its uh, neighborhood uh, because we already have Pakistan and we don't want this thing to happen with other neighbors and uh, we also want to ensure that China does not penetrate into uh, Sri Lanka so that is uh, another reason as well uh, that India is quite concerned about and it India wants to sort this thing out with Sri Lanka now to sort it out recently we had a sort of ministerial level meeting that means uh, ministers from both the sides interacted with each other and uh, if we go through the statement of Ministry of External Affairs then it's it has said that India is quite satisfied regarding the outcome and the progress that is going on between India and Sri Lanka or the, or the things going on between India and Sri Lanka and uh, it ha India has said that it is satisfied about the release of uh, Indian fishermen that were detained by India, uh, Sri Lankan Navy and uh, it is also happy about uh, the these ships or you can say the boats that were released by Sri Lankan Navy and uh, it has also reiterated that the rest of the the remaining Indian fishing vessels uh, that are in the custody of Sri Lanka should be given back to Indian fishermen as soon as possible so so far so good but the thing is why this particular issue keeps on happening between India and Sri Lanka the main reason is you have international maritime boundary line now remember friends uh, say for example when it comes to Pakistan then we have two types of border with Pakistan one is international border and the second one is LOC that is line of control when we when we talk about China then we have LAC that is land, line of actual control but when it comes to India and Sri Lanka we have international maritime boundary line now if we check this picture here right and with the help of let me tell you that this is a very important picture for your overall understanding if you want you can spend some time of, uh, behind this picture you can uh, pause this video here and uh, give a sort of uh, um, and go through the important items uh, that is uh, that are 
mentioned in this particular picture now dear friends uh, on one side if you can see this is india here this is of course the state of tamil Nadu, and you have sri lanka on the other side now uh, between india and sri lanka you have palk strait now if you don't know what strait is all about this is of course the name palk and uh, strait is basically a water body that divides two land forms so here india and sri lanka uh, both these countries are divided by palk strait right this is the water of palk strait here and uh, then you have uh, palk bay you can see two different colors because one palk bay belongs to uh, this area belongs this yellowish area belongs to india and this bit belongs to sri lanka because it is divided this palk bay is divided by indo sri lanka maritime boundary this is a sort of international uh, water boundary you can say so these three things are very important the fourth one is gulf of manar now as you can see that the distance between india and sri lanka is not that much so it is quite natural you can say that when you are in this uh, in the sea or in this palk bay area then you can it is it is very common isn't it to cross this border it would be you cannot find a sort of physical border over there so and the other thing is that not all fishermen are using sort of sophisticated uh, global positioning gadgets navigation gadgets uh, so this is one of the reason as well and but this creates an, a sort of issue between both the countries because indian fishermen particularly are using uh, or are engaged in the practice of bottom trolling what is bottom trolling all about we will learn about this thing in detail but let's just focus on this figures here you can see consistently 2014 15 16 you can see 787 then next year some of them will get released then you have uh, uh, 454 and then 222 even if you go through the 2017 figures as well then you find that this is of course pertaining to both india and sri lanka but you can say nearly half of them or somewhere around uh, 700 something like that would be in sri lanka um, uh, would be nabbed by Sri Lankan Navy. So these things keep on happening between uh, both of us and uh, India. Of course, when whenever any fisherman is apprehended by Sri Lankan side, then it is a big issue uh, in Tamil Nadu. Now, dear friends, uh, why and what should be done? Why this is happening? We have checked this one already out. We know that because of a very narrow border. The other thing is, of course, this fisherman's are going deep inside or towards Sri Lanka because Indian fishermen they do not find that much amount uh, that much fish in this part of uh, in this part of Palk Bay because of trawling bottom trawling has destroyed uh, this literally it has destroyed uh, the fish uh, natural fish uh, you can say production in this area and that is one of the reason why they have to and go deep inside and many times you find them somewhere here as well which is a very dangerous thing isn't it so to sort this thing out once and for all sri lanka this year on 6th july to be precise 6th july 2017 sri lanka sri lankan go parliament or you can say sri lankan government passed a law right it has passed an act the name is an amendment to the fisheries and aquatic resources act now why this act is particularly dangerous for indian fishermen because it talks about two years of jail and fifty thousand rupees fine now what happens dear friends what used to happen till now is that if there was any sort of problem between india and sri lanka then it was the diplomats right diplomats uh, used to sort this thing out and uh, it was not that this law was not there there was of course law there were laws uh, regarding this thing but now this particular thing is particularly dealing with bottom trolling it is it has uh, considered bottom trolling as an offense and so what happens now diplomats it would be very difficult you may say if not impossible for diplomats to sort out things between india and sri lanka pertaining regarding this uh, fisherman's issue because now the things uh, will go through the court of law and we know that court of law will take its own time and uh, in any democratic government uh, you won't find a sort of you you cannot interfere isn't it because judiciary in itself is independent so because of this thing you cannot interfere and uh, if if someone is catched and if uh, he or she is proven to be practicing bottom trolling then 
Indian Tamil Nadu fisherman could land in the Sri Lankan jail for at least two years and this will create a big issue. Now if we go back to of course uh, after regarding this law Tamil Nadu, uh, the fishermen from Tamil Nadu are not happy about it at all. Now if we're going back to the history of bottom trawling then this technology was uh, introduced under Indo-Norwegian agreement in 1968 and the main aim was to of course uh, increase the catch right this was the basic aim and if we go back to the relationship between the fishermen of India and Sri Lanka then the very interesting thing is that uh, fishermen living on of course this part you know that the people uh, uh, it, this is itself a state of Tamil Nadu so we know that Tamil people are living here but here as well you find Tamil people living here right this portion or this whole range is of Tamil people so what is happening is that uh, one community living in two different countries are fighting with each other because it is about livelihood and uh, if you go back to the history 1950 to 75 then uh, both were cordial towards each other fishermen of India and Sri Lanka were cordial with each other they used to fish together they used to do fishing together and there was no problem at all but later on Tamil Nadu fishermen started using this uh, bottom trolling and uh, during this LTTE era at that point of time there was no one to stop uh, the Tamil Nadu fishermen at all so they were uh, exploiting this Palk Bay area and later on Sri Lankan fishermen as well started using this uh, they also started using this uh, mechanized boats and mechanized trawlers and if you see from 1975 to 83 then we find that uh, uh, this thing was was at its peak and since then we can see that relationship between these two fishermen have witnessed a sort of downfall now what this bottom trolling is all about see here you can see a boat right this is a boat and uh, mind you that this is a very a powerful boat then you can see that two ropes are attached to the boat and uh, this uh, two ropes are carrying a sort of net right this net is a very heavy metal net so it will not float it will mm, go down uh, in the bottom of the sea and you can see a couple of uh, a sort of wheels here as well and uh, so this powerful boat will drag this whole uh, net and uh, let me tell you that it may look a bit smaller, this net may look small, but uh, it could be as big as a sort of, uh, you can say, a football ground. It could be this big. Can you imagine that thing? The other thing is that uh, many times there are two boats uh, used rather than one. So at that point of time, this uh, net is quite huge. Uh, so the action of here is the official definition, the action or practice of fishing by dragging a net over or just above the bottom of a body of water especially the seabed this is a very widely spread or you can say that this ha this uh, practice of bottom trolling is done in different parts of the world and it is of course having a very negative consequences on uh, ocean life or you can say the sea ecosystem uh, it no doubt destroys corals, sponges, fishes and other animals. Uh, till now we were not having that much amount of uh, data or study on this uh, on the impact of bottom trolling but now we have many uh, you can say many scientific and substantial data against it and if you if you can just uh, see that the figure that is given here right the the resuspended or the stirred up particle right uh, done by or the resuspension of this uh, of, of the sediments that are deposited uh, at the bottom of the ocean or sea uh, this is somewhere around 22 gigatons this means uh, or this 22 gigaton is some total of all the sediments being deposited on world's continental shelves by river each year can you imagine this thing imagine every year the rivers all the rivers around the world are adding 22 gigaton of sediments but uh, this uh, this bottom trolling uh, can resuspend can can uh, can release this settled thing in the water uh, so you can imagine that this is a very uh, very serious thing that is going on around the world the other thing is that uh, dear friends uh, i have 10 points uh, right uh, 10 points or 10 facts uh, through which we will be we will 
uh, we will try to understand how bottom trolling is not good at all first of all it as you know as we have just talked about this thing this uh, sediment mass it, uh, uh, it basically trolling destroys the natural sea floor habitat you can see the whole ecosystem here you can see small fishes then you have different plants and vegetables uh, on the bottom of this ocean so it destroys these things right uh, it also destroys all the plants and animals of course and uh, you can see a picture here right this picture is of untrolled coral and see this one this is a sort of trolled coral you can see it is it, you can say that it is turned into a sort of desert isn't it it looks just like that uh, it used to be lush green but now you can see it is nothing you can find nothing over here at all the other thing is it uh, destroys the nutrient level and uh, it uh, destroys the entire chemistry of the water because of the mud that is released and the mud stays uh, in the water for a long period of time the photosynthesis process again uh, gets uh, severely affected um, the other thing with the help of this picture i would like to show you here that of course this bottom rolling does not work um, uh, around this or it cannot go this deep right 4000 meter not at all its range is basically this continental shelf now you can see there are different stages or you can see different parts of uh, ocean floor you have coast here you can see this is coast and somewhere around 30 meters roughly speaking right uh, 30 meters or less than that uh, is the place where you find this continental shelf so this is the range of this uh, bottom trawlers the other thing is that uh, you can also understand that you cannot find sunlight after 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 some depth right so uh, all the vegetations and biodiversity will be available uh, here right most of the biodiversity would be available here if you go down here then as well you will find different items but you won't find them in that much variety of course because sunlight is not there so you don't find vegetables and plants and other different sorts of animals so whenever trolling uh, whenever this uh, bottom trolling is practiced what happens is that uh, all this uh, this resuspended sediments they get carried away or they are uh, they flow with the ocean current and then they settle down somewhere else if they settle down here or here then that's it um, they are of no use at all and after a couple of couple of months or maybe after a couple of uh, weeks or years yeah you will find that this whole uh, sediment thing will be gone away from here and all you will have is just bare rocks and on rocks you won't have any sort of biodiversity so this will basically destroy all the small plants and animals and then the whole food chain will get disturbed right so in this way the species diversity and habitat complexity is also directly destroyed by this bottom trawling and once this sediments are deposited somewhere else then we lose them forever we have a sort of we lose them permanently so there is no sort of uh, fixing uh, them and there is no way we can fix them back to their natural state and uh, there are lots of research done by different agencies and the, the person that you can see on your screen his name is Ferdinand Obrell and he is a geological oceanographer and he has done extensive research on this particular item and these are other side products or side effects of you can see this trolling will catch unnecessary items as well it will take away plants as well with it and uh, it will it will catch the fishes that are not uh, edible and the fish that are not required as well so this practice you can understand is a sort of sheer destruction for ocean now coming back to india and sri lanka issue see here you can see uh, when we talk about Manar and then Jaffna and the other places then we can roughly if you add them then you will find that roughly speaking nearly 1.5 or something 1.5 lakh right 1 lakh 50 thousand fishermen are on this part of Sri Lanka are directly uh, depending on uh, on on this uh, on their livelihood depends on fish fish catching isn't it then uh, if you observe the picture here then you find that 50,000 Tamil Nadu family are living on poaching. They are poaching fish uh, of Sri Lankan coast. And then uh, total catch by Indian side is 426735 metric tons. This is huge amount. And your loss to Sri Lanka because of this bottom trolling is 47 billion rupees. Can you imagine this thing? And you can see approximately poaching 
so these are the figures here at present this has been reduced to 2000 we have roughly speaking 2000 bots 2000 trolling bots operating in this area and we are going to sort this thing out as well very soon hopefully then uh, if you go through the figures of 1980 uh, from 1980 to 19 to 2030 13 then we find that uh, see here uh, this uh, jaffna let's take the example of jaffna here you see and see they used to have uh, 55 metric ton they used to catch this much amount of fish or marine uh, marine animals but in 2013 it has drastically dropped it is somewhere nearby 20,000 metric ton it used to be somewhere around 53 or 52 met 52,000 metric ton so less uh, it is nearly halved or you can see and uh, if you see the GDP as well then it has gone down the GDP that is based on fishery is down in Sri Lanka so of course it is quite natural that Sri Lanka is not happy about this thing at all so what we have done is we have formed a sort of joint working group on fisheries both India and Sri Lanka and last year that is uh, on uh, it was on 5th November 2016 uh, three points were agreed the first one was uh, first one is in fact a hotline uh, setting up a hotline between the coast guards of both the countries so that both the coast guards can interact with each other the second thing is JWG that is this uh, meeting of this joint working group in every three months and then you have ministerial level meeting ministry or minister of fisheries from the Sri Lanka side and minister of agriculture and fisheries of uh, India and from Indian side they will meet each other every six months so this is a very positive sign the other thing is that uh, th there is also a commitment of no violence or loss of life and then you have also a window for you can say a possibility of joint patrolling as well to ensure that bottom trolling is not practiced in this Park Bay area so this is good thing uh, all these steps taken so far can we say that this issue has been permanently solved uh, of course not yet but the work is in progress and it is in right direction as well uh, now the Sri Lankan fishermen have clearly rejected Indian fishermen's offer or their request Indian fishermen were asking for 85 days per year uh, in this 85 days they were they should be, they were um, they were suggesting that they are allowed to use bottom trolling but of course the fishermen of Jaffna has clearly said a big no and uh, whenever there is any sort of problem going on between India Indian fishermen and Sri Lankan fishermen then what happens is that uh, see here the Tamil Nadu fishermen will uh, complain to their respective uh, to their Tamil Nadu state government the Sri Lankan fishermen will of course complain to uh, this northern state government and then this uh, state government will go to central government and then this both governments will have a sort of issue with each other isn't it so you have three different uh, levels here right one is of uh, fisherman level the second one is regional level and the third is national level and uh, of course we cannot forget uh, a sort of international impact as well China is trying its level best to ensure that it can make Sri Lanka its colony so this is a big thing for us so we have to find something that can help us solve this thing once and for all and uh, one thing that is a bit promising is deep sea fishing now what is deep sea fishing let me tell you one example one let me give you a very small hint here see deep could be two things right one could be vertical that means going deeper in the ocean and the second thing is deeper in this way horizontal as well so when we talk about deep sea it has a, it is a sort of mix of both things right you you go a bit away from continental shelf but uh, you go a bit deeper here and you go a bit deeper here so in this way um, this is a rough idea of uh, deep sea fishing now um, coming back to this deep sea now 500 uh, at present as i told you there are nearly 2000 trawlers uh, in in this uh, park bay and central government of india and tamil nadu uh, regional government or state government has decided to replace this 2000 trawlers in three years and uh, first slot uh, they are going to introduce 500 deep sea fishing bot now what is deep sea fishing all about so basically catching fish that lives in deeper parts of ocean or sea is called deep sea fishing and the good thing about this uh, deep sea is that deep sea fishing is that 
it is practiced worldwide and it has no ecological damage at all now as you can see if you have to go a bit deeper into the sea then you have to use of course a very a bit of sophisticated bot and uh, prime minister has recently indian prime minister has launched a project uh, to promote deep sea and uh, five fishermen from ramnatham puram have uh, also got uh, registered themselves as there as as they have registered um, uh, the names for for these boats and uh, uh, nearly 14000 fishermen uh, are going to benefit from this transition now if we see the benefits of this uh, deep sea uh, fishing then we can understand that how it is going to be a good solution right the bot is going to of course cost 80 lakh because uh, as you can see it is more sophisticated bot the other thing is uh, to sort this or to ensure that this is as smooth as possible the central government is going to pay 50 percent of this 80 lakhs or roughly speaking 40 lakh rupees is coming from central government then you have state government investing another 20 rupees 20 percent in it institutional finance could range somewhere between 20 to 30 and the beneficiary has to pay 10 percent the thing is the voyage duration right this is a financial thing now uh, some specification the voyage or uh, it will take 15 days or you have to go out in the sea for a fortnight or for a month but the catch that you will get would be eight to ten tons of high value catch so the money that you are going to make out of this thing is going to be high as well so one trip can 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 result in seven to eight lakh rupees profit which is not bad at all isn't it but there are some apprehensions right there are there is always whenever we try something new there would be uh, some sort of apprehension and the fishermen are saying that uh, uh, the the contribution is too high like 10 percent out of of 80 lakh is 8 lakh rupees uh, which is uh, too much but the department is saying that we have already consulted you and at that point of time you agreed that 8 lakh is something uh, reasonable uh, but on 8th september 2017 tamil nadu fishery university decided right it said that let's uh, sort out a let's uh, let's organize a one day uh, sort of workshop in deep sea fishing and of course the main aim is to ensure a so smooth transition right or as uh, or an alternative of this trolling in park bay so uh, this was a, a sort of a, it was a bit of you can say successful program and uh, it talked about the blue revolution and the main aim of india or the, the vision of india in blue revolution and the vision is of course to exploit fishing resources to maximum within um, to the maximum within 200 nautical miles of exclusive economic zone do you know that dear friends uh, up to 200 miles right you are allowed to uh, to use the resources right you are allowed to do fishing and all these things but india is not uh, that much advanced when it comes to blue revolution or you can say deep sea uh, fishing so this is again a vision of india to exploit this thing and uh, one nautical mile is of 1.8 kilometer right so this keep this thing in mind as well so for uh, regarding this thing we have opened a new deep sea fishing port as well at uh, mukiyur and uh, challenges if we talk about the challenges of this deep sea fishing then uh, there are some people who are raising questions that do we have enough or sufficient stock in the ocean that would uh, satisfy this fishermen's or the other people are saying that uh, trolling is a sort of one day affair but uh, you know that you would have to spend 15 to 20 days or 30 days in ocean when you when you switch over to deep sea fishing so do our people have sufficient skills and things like that then you will have issues regarding transboundary because you know that 200 miles is 200 nautical miles you go a bit deep and then you also find in bay of bengal we will find uh, fishermen of uh, bangladesh and myanmar and that could be clashes over there as well so these are the things uh, these are the apprehensions and some of the of the challenges uh, but of course uh, these challenges uh, should be overcome because because we want to sort this issue of india and sri lanka out as soon as possible isn't it and again we know that it is not a sort of uh, healthy practice you know, to to practice this bottom trolling so what could be the way ahead the way ahead is of course step by step we have to switch over to, uh, to deep sea fishing boats and uh, we have to ensure that this trolling system this tr bottom trolling is not practiced and for that we have to monitor 
this bulk bay area the other thing is that uh, we have to set up more and more research and uh, techni uh, technological um, institutions that can that can educate our fishermen right and uh, this vice chancellor of tnfu has said that they are going to open a sort of uh, shore lab facility uh, they are going to to teach this uh, fishermen when it comes to mm, communication devices and navigation devices how that you use them in deep seas and how you how you survive in deep sea and um, the necessary other necessary skills associated with uh, this uh, deep sea fishing practice uh, they are also going to provide on board training and these are the things that we should we should also rope in other countries as well if there are any developed countries who are uh, master in this uh, deep sea fishing then we should invite them over here as well how about uh, allowing them to open a university or college in our in our country uh, then uh, there should also there are, there would be many people who will not opt for deep sea fishing whether the the existing troll trolling fleet right or the trolling crew uh, the government should set up something or it should uh, say for example coal chains or tourism diversifying them or um, absorbing them in tourism industry or something else right so basically alternative livelihood solutions should be provided to this fishermen and uh, uh, it won't be a big challenge because just like a farmer the farmer is attached or a farmer worships his or her land in the same way a fisherman worships the sea so it won't be difficult right it is just a, a sort of change of hat uh, that's it you are not going to um, diversify this fisherman to altogether different uh, profession not at all they are attached to the sea and uh, they know uh, they know the sea very well and when they are educated when you tell them when you tell them that this uh, this is the damage that is caused by bottom trolling then of course they will also get rid of this sort of practices isn't it and uh, one more thing is that uh, this uh, this palk strait right or this palk bay is not a sort of contested territory between india and sri lanka but it is a sort of common heritage it is a thread that is uh, that is joining both these countries together and we have to ensure that we maintain peace and uh, this has to be uh, this has to work on all three different levels right the three levels are of course you know that the first one is fishermen level people to people contact second one is uh, regional governments tamil nadu government and the northern province government of sri lanka and of course uh, the national government of both the countries and as uh, manmohan singh stated in a different context he said that we cannot do anything with the borders but we can try to make them irrelevant so of course we should try to make this borders between india and sri lanka irrelevant and hopefully let's uh, let's hope that in future both the fishermen of this two countries will uh, will conduct a sort of joint fishing uh, ventures or you can say joint fishing voyage isn't it let's hope for the best and uh, i hope that uh, with this discussion this particular thing uh, is uh, this very important topic of india and its neighborhood relationship is uh, a part of it is clear to you when it comes to india and sri lanka i'm sure it is clear to you now and uh, don't forget to get this pen drive and tablet courses remember 21st is the last date don't forget to subscribe to our channel share this video like it pass your valuable comment with this i end this discussion here i'll see you all soon till then enjoy your studies jai hind